Hello beautiful roses, it's Vervain. Welcome to my YouTube channel again. You are probably maybe just here watching my tarot deck collection video and now we've gone through those 15 tarot decks in that previous video which will be linked below if you haven't seen it yet. And now we're gonna delve into the other 26 decks that I have here that are not tarot decks. There's a whole mix of stuff. We've got affirmation decks, oracle decks, Lenormand decks, one playing card deck, we got a spread deck, we got chocolate frog cards. It's a whole smorgasbord of decks and we're gonna get into them right away. So the first ones that I'm gonna go through are my Lenormand decks. I have four Lenormand decks here today. The first one that came into my possession is the Gilded Reverie Lenormand by, I believe, Chiro Marchetti is how you say it, I think. I don't know. Um, and these are really beautiful. They do have this gold stamp or gold foil detailing on the cover, and it's a magnetic closure, opens right up, and all of the cards are gold edge. They are gilded on the edges. It has a little white book, um, and these are the backs. It's all digital art. I usually don't like digital art, actually, or I'm like very, very picky about it. This is the first digital art deck that I bought. That's the lady, the clover, the birds. That's just a really, really beautiful card in this deck, I think. The sun, the mountain, the rider. I really like that card in here. Um, yeah, so, and the serpent. I'm not super good at Lenormand. I'm still totally learning it, um, but I think that this is a really beautiful deck. And I have had some, I, I, I have, I've had some limited success with this deck, but I would say that my success with this deck has only been limited because my experience with Lenormand and my like dedication at learning it has been so limited. I'm just so much more interested in tarot. But I feel like I feel like there's wisdom in Lenormand that's like waiting for me to unlock it. The second Lenormand deck that I bought is the Lenormand Oracle. I think that's all it's called by Los Garbeo. It's by Laura Tuan. This one I actually trim because they I think they fit pretty much perfectly in this box and they were really big. And I trimmed, they just had like white borders on them on the fronts and on the backs so I trimmed them and now the backs have no borders and the fronts have no borders and I like them a lot better and I also put some copper ink on the edges um, here we've got the anchor the birds um, I think that's the mountain maybe that's the moon I don't know maybe I should look it up the tower whoops the ship yeah, these, so these cards are super traditional and I really like them. Um, again, it's just a Lenormand thing. Like I don't use them a whole lot because I don't really get Lenormand. Um, I've bought four Lenormand decks because I keep hoping I'll get the Lenormand deck that will like get me into Lenormand. Um, hasn't happened yet. Doesn't mean it's not gonna happen, just hasn't happened yet. And it may not be a deck that's gonna get me into Lenormand because I really love all these decks that I have. This other one that I really, really love, this is Pixie's Astounding Lenormand. And this is like, even if I decide I'm never ever gonna read Lenormand, like I'm keeping this in my collection because I'm such a fan of Pamela Coleman Smith's work in the Rider Waite Tarot. And this is all, it's this is digital collage made entirely from artwork by Pamela Coleman Smith. And it's not all from the Rider Waite Tarot, it's from some of her other works as well. But there you've got the birds. And the really cool thing about the book is it tells you where all the images are from. So I think these birds are from the Nine of Pentacles, but you can look it up in the book and it will tell you. Just really, really beautiful art. I just love Pamela Coleman Smith. And so I love this deck. And this is Pixie's Astounding Lenormand and it comes in a little tin and it comes with this little book. It's basically a little white book, but it's got a full color glossy cover and it's bound. And I think that's really nice. Um, yeah, and it tells you the book's got meaning. It's like meanings in different categories, keywords, card energy. It's got a couple of sample, sample combos for each card. Uh, love, career, timing, image origins. Um, a difficult card to create, much of the bear 
on the bear card, I guess, is taken is made up of artwork taken from the lion on the strength card. Adding weight to the background of the familiar mountains from the fool card. The ledge the bear stands on comes from the page of swords. So that's what I'm talking about. Like super cool shit like that. Um, and I think like this will probably be, and I just also, I just love the backs. Look at those little roses. Uh, I think if I ever really do get into Lenormand, this will probably be my main Lenormand deck. Um, but that's a far off fantasy. This deck is not advertised as Lenormand, but it definitely is. These are the fairy tale fortune cards. I got these at half price books for probably like $5. Uh, it's got this little book, which what's really cool is that for each card in this deck, they've got um, like a little fairy tale. So this is the ship card. Like I said, this is a Lenormand deck. Um, and it's got a tale, the three ships and the three brothers. He who builds a ship that floats, there's this whole story here, like I'm not going to read it to you now. Um, and then it's got meaning and the meaning and some sa suggested meaning and some sample combinations and it tells you the associated playing card. Just a really cool concept. I really, really love the concept. The quality of the cards is not my favorite. They're super glossy. They do feel like a children's toy. Um, I did actually buy this for a child and then I loved it so much I went back and got it for myself. I'd like told myself it looked kind of like not like something that was for kids and so I was really excited about getting it for this kid and then I was just like actually this is a really really cool concept. I want this in my collection even if I just end up playing with it for a while and then giving it to another kid. Um, and it's got some of the meanings on the card. So it says the tower, destiny, and protection. And so I find like maybe this is actually going to be the deck that gets me into Lenormand because it's got meanings on the cards. Um, yeah, anyhow, I just think it's really, really cute and very like vivid and easy to understand. Um, and I love that it's got stories for every card to help you remember the meaning. Um, so I should use that more. Maybe that's what I should do. And maybe I'll do a sample reading. Maybe I should do, let me know, comment below if you want a sample reading with the fairy tale fortune card so that we can kind of learn how to use this together and try and figure this out together because that's how I like to do things together. Okay, so then we've got this whole stack which is pretty much exclusively affirmation cards. We'll start with Crazy Sexy Love Notes by Chris Carr. I love this deck. I use it on my morning ritual all the time. I've got two cards from this deck on my altar right now that I actually pulled for morning ritual. This is a card I pulled for Morning Ritual, that's why it's on the front. And they've got these beautiful, beautiful, um, like, it's time to rise, risk it. Just beautiful, beautiful, soft artwork, ask for help. It's like soft and vivid at the same time. I don't know how to describe it. Um, a new day on every single card is just different and beautiful. Oh, we've got some. That are, oh, that's just like the title card. Okay, so yeah, they're all super beautiful, believe, super beautiful cards on the front. They're also super beautiful on the back, full color on the back, and then right on the back, they've got like the full interpretation or like the full essay on the card or whatever, you know? So on the one hand, you can't pick these cards blindly. You're always going to have like some sort of element of color. Um, or you'll have to just shuffle them properly, which like, I don't, I won't do that with these because they feel so nice and buttery and I don't want to bend them. Um, but yeah, so you're never picking blindly, but I find that like picking by the colors I feel drawn to or letting people pick by the colors they feel drawn to is a really good way for people who are uh, less comfortable with cardomancy and like having their cards read. Like especially if you're reading at a party, when I, I like to take these with me if I'm reading at a party, um, because then people who maybe are like a little scared of a tarot reading are not scared of pulling one of these cards and like it's never gonna tell you anything bad. Like, spruce up your nest. It's time for a little spring cleaning. Your home is sacred and your surroundings matter. Bam. And this, there's a, you know, there's way more than that on here. So I just love these. They're, they're positive but they're helpful also. Um, they're vivid and soft and they're beautiful altar cards. Also, as I said, like some of my cards are not in here because they're on my altar. So that's Crazy Sexy Love Notes by Chris Carr. Highly recommend. Um, highly recommend. 
Then we've got Notes from the Universe on Abundance, and these are by Mike Dooley, and he also sends out the, the newsletter in your email, Notes from the Universe, and it's like personalized to you and your dreams, and it's great, and I love that newsletter, and you should sign up for it if you want, just Google Notes from the Universe. Um, these cards are all silver edged. I just love uh, metallic edging. It's one of my favorite things that people do to a deck. And I know some people complain that it wears off over time. I don't care. I'd rather have beautiful <laughs> gold or silver deck and a beautiful gold or silver edged deck for a while and then like have it flake off a little bit than like not have it at all. And I don't care if it flakes off a little bit. I'd rather have it than not. Um, and I know Hay House, I think, like, stopped doing the metallic deck edges for a while, and I'm really glad that I got these before they did that. So these cards all have just beautiful, beautiful landscapes, and I have brought these on Morning Ritual, but not very many times, maybe just once or twice. And, um, but they're just really, really beautiful landscapes, and again, you kind of pick by, like, the landscape that you feel drawn to, because they are colored on both sides and this is the back I'm dropping them everywhere but that's okay um, and then each one has this beautiful note from the universe on abundance I can really use a little pick-me-up or something I'm like you know what let's sit down with my notes from the universe on abundance I bet they would have something to say to me right now that would help me feel better in this moment and get me back on track into that abundance mindset that's going to um, that's transforming my life. Bam. So these are the Life Loves You cards by Louise Hay and Robert Holden. And they are mostly like photos with uh, typed text on the front. I am flourishing and then they have like more detail on the back. I haven't used these in practice with like like drawing a card to set my mind for the day. Um, although maybe I will use these in Morning Ritual coming up. I'm trying to make a point to kind of go through some of the decks that I don't use as often. Um, and I think drawing affirmation cards on Morning Ritual is a really good way for us to have um, some of those important conversations that I think it sometimes takes a card to get into. This is the Wisdom cards, and I think there's another one that's more similar to the Wisdom cards that Ella has that I don't have that is actually my favorite of these three by Louise Hay. Um, that said, I think they're all good. Um, and I think this one I prefer to the Life, I think I prefer the Wisdom cards to the Life Loves You cards. And I'll show you these. These are the ones that I have some of them pinned up and like stuck in drawers where I can see them around my room. So yeah, and we just drew these on Morning Ritual the other day too. My love is limitless. I am my own unique self, blah, blah, blah. And then they have um, more expanded text on the back as well as you may have seen. And there's a whole bunch of these. I think there's 64 in here. There's 52 in the Life Loves You pack. Um, and they're just, they're just all like really vivid, fun artwork. And um, I think, yeah, they're good conversation starters is how I really like to use them. And, and they're good to have around as altar cards and just to, like to, to see. I like having affirmation cards around just to have them, you know, where when if I can see the affirmation and I read it several times a day, like that's the best way for me to integrate it. And here's the Miracles Now deck. This one is also, this one's 62 cards. And this is by Gabrielle Bernstein, also available through Hay House. These are like not usually the sort that I would gravitate to because I feel like it's lazy artwork. <laughs> um, it's all like, there's a lot of repeated designs. Um, I don't know if you can see that, like there's a lot of designs that are used on multiple cards. That said, they are really beautiful. They're just all galactic. Um, and they're really good affirmations. When I allow others to support me, I support them too and uh, my eyes will see what I desire, and relationships are assignments for optimal growth and healing. I don't know how I feel about that. And then they do, these do all have identical backs, so these you can pick blindly from. Um, I don't dance around the perimeter of the person I want to be, I step in fully and completely. So yeah, I really like a lot of these, and same thing, I like to, I, I like to either draw these or 
um, have them up to see and to repeat to myself and read to myself whenever I see them. So the next one I talk about is, it is kind of an affirmation deck, but it's also kind of an oracle deck. I mean, all the affirmation decks are kind of oracle decks, but this one is also kind of like, it's more than that. It's more than an affirmation deck. So this is the moon deck in the Mango Wood box that you can get that it comes in. You can see the unboxing video that I did of this. Um, and this deck is just so beautiful. I'm not over this deck. I have one of the cards up on my nightstand right now. It's the one about getting good rest because I'm still not totally integrated that lesson. Um, and this does come with a nice little guidebook that I'll, t I'll show you that in a second. Um, and so these are the backs of these cards. Um, not exactly reversible because you see the moon then faces different directions. Um, and these cards are just stunning. They go deeper than I think most affirmation cards are, tend to go. And so that's why I feel like they're more like oracle cards. Um, and I'm just gonna show you a few of these even though I showed you a whole bunch in the other video. I just love working with these. I did do a thing a couple, like two weeks ago, I think, where we all, I asked you guys to answer a question in my story and then like anyone who responded in, responded to me with an answer, I pulled a card for them from the moon deck and tagged you in it in my story and that was really fun and I think that was like, like I got so many messages from so many of you saying like, wow, that really helped me get through my day or like, wow, that was exactly what I needed to hear right now. Thank you so much. And that just makes my day when I get to help you through your day like that. And I can't say enough good things about these cards. Um, the other <laughs> good thing that I can't say enough about these cards is that it comes with little rituals. And that's why I say this is kind of more also is like, like if you pull card 21, intimacy, it's got this whole description and then it's got ritual, rose blessings. Roses have been cherished for centuries for their sensual nature. They evoke the spirit of love and uplift mood. Find fresh or dried roses that have no toxic sprays or pesticides. Fill them with prayers of love. And then it's got like three different ideas for like things that you can do with the rose petals to like love yourself and open yourself to intimacy. And so it's like, if you draw this card and like this is the energy that you're needing, like here's a ritual that you can do with the energies around this card to ease that and to manifest that. And so I think that's just really, really cool. Um, can't say enough good things about that. That's the moon deck. In a similar vein, the Guanyin Oracle, um, here spelled with a K, but it's the same goddess, same Bodhisattva. This is by Alana Fairchild. I love this deck. I had this living at Guanyin Tea House for a while, but it's come home with me um, for a time. And this deck is all Guanyin. I have had this on my morning live. Um, these are the backs, just Stunning. But you, you know, you're only going to this deck if you're trying to relate to the energies of Guan Yin. You're not going to this deck for a general reading. But if you're like, I know that I need to tune into the Mother of Mercy and Compassion. I know I need to tune into the Dragon Mother. I know I need to turn into the Peacock Goddess. I know, or tune in, or turn in. I know that I need to tune in to the energies of, um, of Guan Yin, the Bodhisattva of Mercy and Compassion and like I need to hear something from her now. And so if you have or are looking to build a connection with Guan Yin, um, these cards are really, really a great way to go about starting to do that um, because there's so many different aspects of her represented in here. I believe it's um, 44 different aspects on 44 different cards represented in here and every single card in the book has so it's got like this message and then like a little description of the card and then this longer message and then you've got what it says healing in the radiant he healing in the radiant moon of compassion and so it's like this specific healing practice or ritual that like offered by the energy of this card and then prayer of the radiant moon of compassion so then there's this prayer at the bottom that goes all the way to here, that's like a prayer to Guan Yin, integrating the energies of this card. 
And so that I just think is really, really beautiful, solid practice in itself. And so again, this is not like, I don't recommend this for general oracle readings, but I absolutely recommend this um, for the practice that it offers, if that's something that you're seeking. In a similar vein, I have two other oracle kits that are kind of like, you should use them in the way that they're meant to be used and maybe not for a whole lot of other things, but you know, I don't know, whatever. Um, and so we have the Camelot Oracle, which I just unboxed and did a sample reading with that was like super amazing and deep and you can see that on my channel. It'll also be linked below and at the end, I'm sure. Um, and what's really cool about this one, this is its whole own system and it's it's got all these different Arthurian characters as archetypes and then it's got all these different paths to these different places in the Arthurian world and you draw a path card which is one of these guys and then you draw an archetype card to be your champion and you draw an archetype card to be your challenger and then based on where those based on the path that you draw you're going to a different place on the map and based then your champion card your champion is like who helps you get there and then your challenger like asks you specific questions about the place that you're going and then like that helps you answer your question and so you know there's some questions i think that would be better suited for this than others but i just did a whole unboxing so you can see way more detail about this video this deck if you want to in that video so i'm not going to go more into detail in it here but I do think this is super, super cool. I've super benefited from the one reading that I did with it just like yesterday or the day before. Um, and I'm really looking forward to using this like with um, people that I'm reading for and reading with and also just using it for myself in the future on other matters. I really liked the way that it kind of walked me through answering my question. Then I also have this Goddess Guide Me Oracle which I really want the tarot deck by these people. This is by Amy Zerner and Monty Farber. I hope I'm saying that right. And yeah, creators of The Alchemist, The Enchanted Tarot, and Karma Cards. The Enchanted Tarot is the one that I really want. And I think my friend Earth Angel Abigail has it. And I'm so jealous, but it's so beautiful. It's all this kind of like fiber art and collage. And so what's cool about this one, and this comes with instructions, and it's how to communicate with the oracle here on the back and it's got this um, book it's got like interpreting your answers sample questions and answers um, the story the her story of the goddess um, that's a couple pages some rituals of empowerment okay and then it goes into detail I haven't actually even looked at this yet I didn't even realize this did all this because I just got this for solstice and I've only used it a few times but I didn't even realize the book did all this um, but yeah, it goes into detail on all of the goddesses that are featured and then it comes with these three dice that are of different colors and I think they represent the head, the heart, and the home. So yeah, these are I think 12 sided die because I guess there's 12 goddesses featured in here. So then you roll this like that in the little box it comes in and we got, got 5, 11, 5 and then we open it up and it shows you my he my head, my heart, my home. And so, cause we got the five on the purple one, we turn to goddess number five, which is Freya. And then we got an 11 on the head one, or on the heart one. So we go to goddess number 11, who is Atlantia. And then we got a five on the home one. So we go to five again, and that's Freya again. So then we have like built this patchwork goddess and can read all of this information about like how to like how this reflects so it's think creatively feel detachment lead the way and so i don't know i don't know i think this is a really cool concept maybe i'll do this on a morning ritual or do a sample reading video with this one as well let me know if that's something that you guys would be interested in Okay, getting more into my general purpose oracles, we have the Wisdom of Avalon Oracle, also by Hay House, or from Hay House, it's by Colette Baron reed and this one is all um, centered around, again, the stories of Avalon. These are the backs here, beautiful, not reversible, but very, very beautiful. I don't read reversals in this deck anyway. 
Um, we've got a whole bunch of different cards in here. We've got animal guides and we've got sacred, what are called sacred journey markers. And we've got the guides of fairy and we've got more sacred journey markers and we've got the messengers of Avalon and we've got another guide of fairy and another animal guide of Avalon. And so yeah, we've got all these different, the dragon, um, really, really beautiful art in this deck. I find the king, um, the wind fairy. Yeah, just really, really beautiful art. And it's also, I, I used to be really turned off by having keywords on cards, but with Oracle decks, I've come to appreciate it occasionally if the message, if it's, if, I've come to appreciate it occasionally, and in this deck, I don't mind it. Also, this deck has those beautiful gilded edges that I love so much. And I do find that the little, it is really still a little white book, even though it's bound like this. I really like that they're binding them like this, though, especially if they're a little better. Because this one is a little better than your standard LWB. Um, it goes into a little more depth. Um, you get a little, a little two page spread on every card at least. So this is, I think also like this is a really great deck when you're trying to tune into the wisdom of Avalon. And that's one of the things that I love my Oracle decks for is when I'm trying to tune into specific, um, specific perspectives and specific, uh, angles of wisdom and sources of wisdom that I know I'm not currently tapped into. So like if I'm feeling really like lost and unsure, like the wisdom of Avalon might be a really good deck for me. Or if I'm feeling like really down and depressed or like I've really messed up, Guan Yin might be really good for me. Or if I'm trying to figure out like who even am I today, the goddess guide me oracle is really good for that. Or if I feel like I'm just not believing in magic today, the Miracles Now is really good for that. If I'm having trouble seeing the world around me as magical, the Extraordinary Oracle is really good for that. And I don't know if this deck is still available. This is a self-published deck that I helped fund or pre-ordered. I don't remember if I crowdfunded it or just pre-ordered it or what. Um, but it's on really, really beautiful, like watercolor paper, basically. Um, and I believe it's watercolor art. We've got the moon, the to-do list, and basic uh, car or road trip. And it's just all these different um, symbols from like everyday life. And it really talks about you know, seeing the, the book goes into like the magical uses of the things that are all around us. And so it's a salt shaker, but like that's protection, you know? And like, what does a TV dinner mean? Maybe it means a half-assing shit. And what is a radio or, is that a radio? It's like so, I'm so young. <laughs> and we got necklaces, we've got, yeah, it's all these different um, everyday images. Uh, and the tea card, my favorite. Um, all these different everyday images and on this really, 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 really beautiful paper in this beautiful hand stamped bag. So we have the Angel Dreams Oracle cards, which these I are another deck that I haven't really figured out how to use. I'm not willing to part with them because they're so beautiful and because I have used them as like intention setting cards. Um, gold edges, again, love them so much. As intention setting cards for... Um, like for spell work or for dream work. Um, but, uh, I'm, and I'm not really sure how these are supposed to be used, but I think that they're really, really pretty. Um, I do like using them for spell work, although I feel like there's more potential in them to be unlocked for their usage. I just have a lot of difficulty remembering dreams and it's not actually like my highest priority right now or I'd be working on it and I'd probably be better at it um and you know maybe I should get into that as we pick the lucid dream card um but it's got all these really cool like correspondences hi Sean hi um I think it's at least very good for spell work and it's very very beautiful and I don't know you may feel called to hunt it down for other purposes. It does come with a book. I should probably look into it more. <laughs> That's all we'll say about that one.
Okay, then we've got the Magical Unicorns Oracle Cards by Doreen Virtue. These I love, and these are an exception to a rule because I usually really am bothered by the Doreen Virtue decks that have like all these different artists' artwork. Um, but I actually really like like 99% of the artwork in this deck and I feel like it's all such similar energy because like the unicorn spirit is so strongly there in every single card that I'm not really bothered by the fact that it's not that it doesn't all go together perfectly and that it's not all by the same artist like I don't even really notice it honestly because it does all have that unicorn vibe so strong um, and some of them are just gorgeous. This is another deck that I'm like, like if I'm having a really shit day and I need someone to be nice to me, I will go to the unicorn cards. Cause I'm like, you know, I know I have shit to do. I know I have st stuff to work on and things to improve about myself and that I have no right to be complaining. But you know, sometimes I just need a unicorn hug and that's what this is really great for. Also, when you pick cards, you get to make the long necked unicorn and that's pretty much the most satisfying thing in all of tarot reading and oracle reading. So, uh, highly recommend. We also have the Mermaids, or Magical, pardon me, Magical Mermaids and Dolphins Oracle Cards by Doreen Virtue. Um, this is 44 cards with the little guidebook and the guidebook's not half bad, you know, it's a Doreen Virtue guidebook, it does the thing. And then, this one actually I almost didn't get because I was actually super resistant to this artwork. I feel like it's a little bit like Barbie or like 80s, 90s coloring book cover or something. And then like, I don't know, I, I, this is just a little too Doreen Virtue for me. But I say that and it's one of my favorite decks um, for actually reading with. I find that despite my feelings about the art, and I'm really not trying to diss on or piss on any of this art. Like, it's not bad. It's just not my style. It's a little too light and airy for me. And I know I just said how much I loved the unicorn deck for similar reasons. But I don't know. I Don't ask me to justify it. I just, I don't like this art as well. But that said, I've had really, really great readings with this. Um, and I'm absolutely not parting with it. It's been one of the most transformative decks in my practice. So, it, you know, it's hard. Usage-wise, I give it a 10 out of 10. Um, Art-wise, I give it like a 6 out of 10, 5 out of 10. I feel like it's kind of, I don't know, I don't, I also just don't really like that Doreen Virtue will just like cherry pick art for decks rather than like having art created for decks. I feel like a deck will be better if it's built from the ground up. That said, I've had good experiences with this deck, so who might be making sweeping accusations? Um, okay, here's one I don't like. I actually really don't like this deck, and I'm ready to part with this one, so if anybody wants to trade for it or whatever, um, I'll be more than happy to trade this one away. Um, and that's not to say that it's necessarily bad. I bought this one because at the time I was really struggling with belief and I was reading this book and it's like, you know, how to believe in magic with science experiments basically. And like, that's the line that I was going down. I was like, yep, sure, I need science, I need proof, help me. Cause like, I'm pretty sure I believe in magic, but I just need a little confirmation, a little affirmation. And I was digging the book that is by the Oracle of E person, Pam Grout. This is, so this deck is by Pam Grout and Colette Baron reed um, And because I was digging the book and I was on the $7 deck sale and I was like, whatever, let's just get all the decks. Um, I got this. I don't like <laughs> the backs. I just don't vibe with them. Um, I don't really like the concept. I just don't vibe with it. And I don't like that it's just repeated digital it's just repeated like neon digital designs on each card and I all of those things I could get over the thing that I don't like about it um, that has me not using it is that I don't know what any of these things mean unless I open the book like magic carpet okay what's the lesson there got an owie like okay what's the lesson there and like there are lessons 
that kind of like some of them seem to make sense to me that are in the book um but like i would i would call this oracle totally unusable without the book for me this one is the wisdom of the oracle and i was like the wisdom of the what oracle but no it's just called the wisdom of the oracle um and i almost wrote this one off because it just looked red from the thumbnail this was also during the seven dollar deck sale from hay house um, but I really, really like this one, and I don't use it half as often as I should because I find that this one works more like a tarot deck. This is 52 cards, um, and I just find that it's, um, the cards are, like, the names of the cards are open-ended enough, and the illustrations on the cards are deep and detailed and, like, multi-layered enough that I really can read these intuitively and get quite a lot out of them and I can also um I also think that the book has good things to say about it I just I also really like like the concepts that were picked like yin um a leg up like I like the concepts that were picked to be represented on these cards and also like I've said I'm very 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 picky about digital art and that's not like meant to be an insult to digital artists. I, I just am picky about digital art. And this digital art I happen to really like. The backs are reversible. They're beautiful and vivid. The only thing I might, I'm considering, I really like the way the white borders look on the front, but I am i don't like the way they look on the back. And these are kind of big cards. So I'm considering trimming these. Um, again, if you wanna see a video of me doing the trimming and like how I do that and if I decide to apply edging to them of some kind, let me know in the comments below if that's a video that would interest you. Then we've got the Dow cards. This, do this does also come with a book that I think is good to keep around. I've just left it up on my shelf because I'm not gonna look at it right now. Um, these did come with very sharp corners and then I was, I didn't like that. I liked everything about this deck except that it came with really sharp corners and they were pointy and they hurt me. Um, every, again, this is, I would call this a lazy art deck, but it's just really beautiful Taoist sayings and Taoist scriptures and quotes and I really like it. I find it, you know, if you're trying to connect with the energy of the Tao, it's a really good deck to have around with it. Also, as I was finishing um, cutting off the sharp corners, I was just using a little corner punch to round them all. I got to the end of the deck and the last card that I softened, the last card that I rounded the corners on was this one. And I was just like, ha, serendipity, how crazy. Um, but yeah, I love these now that they've been corner punched and they're not so pokey anymore. Um, yeah. And I just keep that in this handkerchief. It's a, it's a thin, also the book is really good because it has more in-depth um, information on like the context of each of the quotes that are included and who said them and blah, 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 blah. So that's really good to have around. Um, another one that I have that I like, this is the Goddess Inspiration Oracle by Chris Walder. I think that's how you say that, I've never really known. Um, the book for each goddess has like one page like this. Every card in this deck is a goddess. This is the bag that came with the deck and it's really nice for an organza bag. Um, these are the backs, not reversible, but beautiful. Um, and this deck I was resistant to at first because of the images being small and most of the card being text but I found that I actually really like pulling these as like a guide card for a reading, like pulling one goddess um, as just like, you know, here's, here's your wisdom for a while, or like this goddess wants to guide you for a while and she has something to say and like here's her story and here's how she relates to this concept and I find it really good for that sort of thing. I do have one of these decks that I'm actually still using for snail mail readings. So if you're interested in receiving a snail mail reading from me, um, I don't have my website up yet, it's in the works. If you want a snail mail reading with a goddess card, I will send you a goddess inspiration oracle card 
and a little note um, with, you know, some of my interpretation and some of the goddess's story and some of um, what uh, I believe she may have to offer you on this part of your journey. So that's that deck. The final like proper oracle deck here that I have is the Heart of Fairy Oracle, which what else am I keeping in here with it? Oh, it's this, um, I think it's Labradorite. Yeah, it's got this beautiful golden Labradorite in there. Hmm. Okay, and this, the Heart of Fairy Oracle is just so vivid. These colors are so bright and beautiful. I love the backs, um, and they are reversible, um, although I don't read this deck with reversals. Um, and this is just full of all sorts of amazing fairy characters and concepts. And this is, this is a really good deck. There is a book with this and it does have good things to say, but I find that this is a really good deck to tune into intuitively and like really spend some time with it. And honestly, I don't read with this one very much because my relationship with the fairies is kind of tenuous and <laughs> I feel like, um, I need to not be like asking for shit from them until and like asking for guidance from them until I'm a little better about like listening to them and I still feel like I'm kind of caught up in my own narrative and my own like stuff that I have to do that I'm always worrying about and not relating with the fairies. Um, so that's that. That's all my serious oracle decks. I have a few more decks to show you. Bear with me. Um, and this one, this first one is kind of an oracle, kind of, but I never use it that way. I just consider it more of an art piece. Um, this is the Fantod pack. Although I think Sean, or Peace Fox, or whatever, has had, um, an interesting experience reading with this deck. It's, it's not, um, you know, like, the unicorn deck, I would recommend to people who are scared of tarot or scared of cardamancy and you know life loves you or crazy sexy love notes i recommend all of those or even the chrysalis tarot i recommend all of those to people who are kind of scared of tarot the fantod pack i don't recommend we have the limb we have the urn we have the ladder the tunnel you know these are they're not comforting images they're not pleasant cards and the meanings that go with them are not more pleasant. For example, uh, the burning head. We'll just read about the burning head in the book. And maybe you'll see what I mean. Also, like, these are not in any order that I can tell. The burning head. Sunday, bafflement, loss of saliva, a forged deed, an impasse, extradition, a boating accident, chillblains, what? Delayed desires, wandering sickness, evil companions, an impediment, despondency. So, you know, not helpful, not pleasant. Um, there aren't any good cards in this deck and I, 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 I feel like I should not be, I, I told Sean like a couple months ago, I was like, I just can't be allowed to read with the Fantod pack because I can't not take cards seriously. And when I draw one of these cards, like there's no, there's nothing that this car, that any of these cards will say that will like give you an opportunity to make things better. Like they just are the terrible things that they are. And if you have that kind of sense of humor, um, then maybe this could be fun for your deck collection. Um, and again, like I want it in my deck collection just cause I love Edward Gorey and that's obviously who this is by. I didn't say that, but it's by Edward Gorey. Um, and I just love his work and I think, I do think it is hilarious. I just like, if I read with it, I start to freak out and I'm like, oh, but all these things, it's ridiculous. Anyhow. Um, this one actually is, I should have talked about, I thought about talking about this one in my tarot deck video, but it's not a tarot deck. But this is the deck of a thousand spreads, and this is one of my favorite tools in my tarot reader kit. 
um, it's just all these different spread positions. So future life, um, blank, <laughs> you can write your own, uh, negative influences. Uh, we got romance, we got career, we got unconscious desires, we got pros, we got cons, we got what to know, we got lots of cards that are great. And I love using these to build, like when I'm figuring, when I'm building a custom spread for a question, these are so helpful because you don't always think about like, the things that you maybe actually most want to know for a question and this card is it this deck is almost like a checklist like oh did you think of this did you think of this and it helps you narrow down also because you know if you saw a lot of those cards were similar like goal and outcome and success and future like hopefully those are similar um but like which one are you actually wanting to lay down in your reading? Because those are actually different if you consider them. And so that's a really cool thing that this deck has allowed me to add to my practice. Um, it didn't come in this bag. I got this at Michael's. It came in a big box. And I don't think it had any bag with it at all, actually. This is... I don't actually remember what this is called. The Seeker's Guide to the Hidden Path is what the book says. So I think it's the Hidden Path cards. Um, I, see, I can see the book from here and I haven't actually really looked at the book I got this a long time ago at Hastings maybe like you know like six years ago or something and uh, The backs are all doors, which I think is really cool And I was a Wiccan at the time so this super resonated with me and I used these as like altar cards I don't know if you can see we've got the Holly King and I think probably the Oak King tree in winter uh, door we've got winter something we've got fall something we've got something 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 i can't read backwards probably ancestors or the kindred um yeah so these i really liked to use for altar card for altars for as altar cards on an altar like specifically for holidays i'd put the holiday card up um, or like for anything where, where we'd honor the triple goddess, I'd put this one up. And I did put these up um, on altars for spell work and celebrations when I was a solitary Wiccan. Now I am not a Wiccan and I just don't celebrate these things as strictly and I don't relate as much to some of this imagery. So I don't use this very much. Um, I don't have anything bad to say about this, um, but I would totally be willing to trade this deck if there are any Wiccans or just people who vibe with this imagery and would like these cards in their life. We've got the Fates. There are actually like some cards, Karma, in here that might be the Watchers that might be useful as Oracle cards or of magic. Um, but I have not... Um, yeah, I just haven't... I don't resonate with it as much as I did when I bought it. This is not an oracle deck, but I actually am hoping to learn to read playing cards. Um, I've had these like my whole life almost. I think when I was like five or six, my dad brought me these back from Egypt and these are papyrus playing cards. So these are the, uh, that's I guess just the cover card. It's got nothing on it. And then these are the backs. And then um, they are, so they're hard to shuffle. They're all warped this way. Um, and they are legitimately papyrus, but they're, and you know, and they're just playing cards. Um, but I think they're really, really cool. And I keep them around hoping that someday I will learn how to read playing cards, which now I'm actually really hoping to do because I've just, ordered, um, I kickstarted the Gjallarhorn deck by Matt Hughes and the Ethereal Visions Publishing, um, which I'm actually, I'm still waiting on my Ethereal Visions tarot, but I hear tell that it should be here very, very soon. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then the Gjallarhorn deck will be coming out, which is a playing card deck that has some Norse gods as the court cards and that I'm, and just like figures from Norse mythology as the court cards. And so I felt really called to that and I feel like I'm gonna use that to learn uh, to read playing cards and then maybe someday I'll be able to use this too. So I don't really use these, but these are not portrayed, they're just special to me. 
Oh, and then this last one, this is totally not a, uh, this is totally not Oracle cards. These are, this is my collection mostly of chocolate frog cards. Um, and so these are from the British chocolate frogs that were released in the UK and they are all uh, lenticular and so they all um, you know move they're all animated um, which I just think is so so cool and I just thought this was the coolest thing as a kid and my mom went to great lengths to help me get my hands on as many of these as we could and they all say on the they all say Harry Potter on the front that's one thing um and then on the back they just say like what they are and talks about the image a little bit um but I love those and then these well this is just a, a borders gift card from when the seventh book came out I don't know if you can even see that it's lenticular and that it's moving, but it is. Um, and then these are the American chocolate frog cards. So these came with chocolate frogs that were purchased in America and they're all purple on the back, except for this one that's red. They all say, uh, these ones, uh, I, what I like about these is these don't all say Harry Potter on the front. They actually are all characters. Um, Whereas the British ones are like scenes, some of them. Um, but this is like, we've got Weird Sisters here and it's like two of the Weird Sisters on one card and their name changes. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, but I just, I think these are so cool. And maybe I also like, I didn't bring this up here. I have a huge collection of the Harry Potter trading card game cards. And that's just like my nerdy Harry Potter side look. Harry Potter. Um, so, you know, I'd be open to doing more of like a Harry Potter collection video at some point or like play a Harry Potter trading card game with me or something. I don't know. Anyhow, sorry, we're getting way off track. This was an Oracle collection video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of these Oracle decks and affirmation decks and what's it's and, um, I also hope if you watched the tarot video, I hope that you enjoyed that. If not, that'll be linked below and here at the end. Um, thank you. If you, if there are any of these decks that I showed you in this video or in the other one that you would like to see reviewed more in depth or that you'd like to see me do a sample reading with, please don't hesitate to request that. Just message me and I will add it to my list of videos to make. I take it very seriously when you guys make requests because you are the people that I'm, you know, I'm trying to reach and I, I love you guys and I want to talk about things that you want to talk about or that you want to listen to me talk about. Um, and I'm, it makes me so happy to know that so many of you are just like listening to this, to me do this and talk about this stuff while you're like knitting or crocheting or quilting or whatever. I love that. That makes me so happy. Um, I love that I can be a part of your passions in that way um so i love you guys as always if you did enjoy this video please do give it a thumbs up and comment down below with anything you have to say or any questions you might have any requests for future videos blah 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 blah. please do subscribe and don't forget to check out some of my other videos especially the tarot deck collection video if you haven't yet watched that one and i will see you guys later very very soon i'm sure mm. have a great day